In a world that has decided that it's going to lose its mind Be more kind, my friends, try to be more kind That's right, everybody. That's right, everybody. <laughs> Just try and be more kind. <laughs> we echoed each other. With the, that's right, everybody. Like a, um, that's right, everybody. That's right, everybody. It's like uh, what's the guitar effect? Delay. Delay. It's like we're our the. That's right, everybody. It was on delay. Yeah. But also the the tone change. How about like a slapback delay, <laughs> like that maybe? <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? Anyways, welcome back to American Brews and Tunes, everybody. Here's a theme song. You know it's not a mean song. It's a good song, just as it should song, American Brews and Tunes. Shibbity-beeby-dow! Yeah, oh my goodness, it feels like it's been too long. It has been. I think we haven't put out an episode for maybe three weeks? Yeah, we've been uh, slightly busy, I guess. It, it's been a. It's been Rocktober, let's be honest. Yeah, we've been going to shows, and we've been... Shooting the breeze. Shooting the breeze with people. Picking some heels. Huh? Clicking some heels. Clicking some heels. <laughs> you know, just living life. <laughs> yeah, living life, learning. But having, we're back. Having a good time. Yeah, if uh, if someone was to refer to us as a singular person, and that person was Cornelius Fudge, he would say, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. That's uh, a, too specific. That is a tough... Uh, what's the, what do I, how do I want to say this? That's like a, a deep cut... A uh, weird way to transition into me talking about this, how it's weird. <laughs> it is, it is, but we're but anyway, here. Regardless, we're here. This is a one off episode. Well, yes, no, it's it not, is. Not really one off because this is actually a recommendation episode. Oh, yes, it is. Um, we is often it? will will advise you guys, invite you to recommend an album for us to review. Yeah. And we'll gladly review that album. Yeah. Um, our friend. Jose Balderas, yes. who we know as Above, yep. recommended that we listen to the album Some Mad Hope by, by Matt, Matt Nathanson. Nathanson. And so shout out to you, Above. And he, he he is very near and dear to our hearts. He designed our logo, the yeah. American Bruising Tunes logo. Yeah. Um, so we are forever indebted to him. Yep. What a good guy. And even better, he did it for free. He did it out of the kindness of his own heart. Yeah. So he he's like, I'm gonna be more kind yeah. and give them a logo. What a good what a good guy. What a great friend. So for free, we'll do this episode for him. Shout out to you above. A shout out. I hope you like this review of the album that you like. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, before we get to reviewing that album, uh, on these episodes where we only review one album, we also only review one beer. One beer, yes. Um, and so, I can't remember if we've had this beer in the podcast before. I really don't Even think we Even if have. we have, it's it would have been a long have. time ago. And it might have been a different year, but we're reviewing a beast of a beer. One beast of a beer, and that's right. It is none other than the yearly release... PBR! <laughs> <laughs> no. Just kidding. Uh, we are going to be trying the 2017 Goose Island Bourbon County brand stout. This is a a, a pretty coveted beer. Um, yeah, I it's mean, not extraordinarily difficult to get, but no. it's it's very it's it's limited. You just kind of have to plan it out because normally it comes out on Black Friday. It, it only comes out once a year on Black Friday. You need to know which distributors, beer distributors, which, uh, which liquor stores, stores will, have it will have it. And you got to get there early enough to yeah. procure yourself one. I believe last year we went to Craft Brood. We did. One of our favorite places in Nashville. Um, and we got there at like 6? 5.30? 6? Some absurd time. We were the second and third people in line. Though, I yeah. Know and they didn't open it until 8. Yeah. I we believe. had fun though. We, we made friends. Yeah. Uh, someone bought, uh, brought a bottle to share of, I can't remember what beer it was. Something good. Something good. It was a stout. Um, but it was it was a lot of fun, and so yeah, it's a great beer. It's a uh, a bourbon county, or it, I'm sorry, a bourbon <laughs> barrel aged stout, an yes. imperial stout, imperial stout, clocking yeah. in it. What's this one clocking? It's very high gravity, probably uh, like thirteen or fourteen percent. Am I right? This one is clocking in at where's the thing? 
it's on there somewhere. Uh, 14.7. 14.7. So it's Alcohol up there. That's, that's a pretty steep uh, gravity, if I do say so myself. Yep. It was bottled on the 28th of July, 2017. Yeah. And I've I've so had uh, a couple different year years. Old. I've had a couple different years of this. I don't think I've had a 2017 uh, that I can I'm remember. Pretty sure I haven't, but we can always check in our the best beer app, Untapped. Untapped, yeah. Um, um, but from what I remember, this is a big bold beer, and it's yeah. delicious. Nice alliteration. Big bold big, beer. Big bold beer. A big bold barley bourbon <laughs> bourbon beer. beer from barrels. It'll put hair on your chest. Bah. <laughs> I don't need any more hair in my chest, though. Uh, I've got a couple. Like three? You've got a couple, yeah. <laughs> I've got a few, I should say. Actually. I drank too much black coffee when I was younger. Please. My dad always put. My dad always told me, that'll put hair in your chest, Jesse. But he also had the genes that gave you yeah. facial and body hair, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Except my, he and my brother both have, both, both have less chest hair than me, though. That's weird. Must, it's maybe strange. it's come from your mom's side. I don't it's know. It's a mutation. I'm a mutant. You're Norwegian. I feel like those. Yeah. What do you, call, say what do you call them? Norwegians? Is that the word for them? The Norwegers? <laughs> no, not the Norwegians. Norwegians, yeah. Norwegians. <laughs> Norweger. What what'd you call it? Norwegites. Norwegites. <laughs> the Norwe. There, there, there were Vikings, right? Yeah. Yeah. I imagine, when I envision a Viking, I think of a very hairy guy with a <laughs> pointy. Hat <laughs> with a pointy hat, with like the, a the like horns. a wizard's hat, <laughs> like like the uh, I know what you're talking about, the one with the horn, like the opera lady, that like she the, has. the Wagner opera, yeah, the yeah the <laughs> lady who is <laughs> flight of the Valkyrie, yeah. Bum, 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 bum. Kill the wabbit, kill, kill the, the wabbit. wabbit. <laughs> he had one of those Viking hats on. Yeah, yep. Uh, classic. Anyway, but anyways, shall we uh, delve into this beer? Yes. Um, I've been letting it warm up for probably a boot. Maybe 15, 20 minutes. 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, like so, we, we've said it before on the podcast, if you really want to see what your beer tastes like, don't drink it at uh, refrigerator temperature. No. Let it warm up a little bit. As it warms up, the, the actual flavors will become, present themselves. Yeah, they become more pronounced, as it were. Yeah. Um, so I'm ready to dig into this beer because I'm excited. I'm, ex- um, I'm excited as well. I'm pretty sure the last time I had a Bourbon County was the, that one time when I had a coffee one. I tasted um, yours, but I didn't have mine. I, I've what got was the occasion? Because I brought it out because like we had like a whole bunch of people here, and I was like, "Oh, I would love to have this tonight." So I, I think did. we just had a bunch of people over. Yeah, and so I was you're like, like, "I'm just gonna break out a good beer and let some people yeah. try it." And then Bobbert tried, and he was like, "This is terrible." <laughs> it was too strong for him, I guess. Does he like stouts? I don't think so. Our buddy Bobbert likes IPAs. Yeah, IPAs. Um, and but, he likes the Chilado from Bud Light. Oh gosh. <laughs> It's like a beer he, mixed with clamato juice. So bad. It's not but ideal. He told me that if you if someone who actually knows how to make one makes one for you, then it's actually pretty good. But all that tasted like the the chalada chalada chalado. It just tasted like beer with tomato juice in it. Like that was it. It was odd. It was gross. I didn't think it was gross, but it wasn't what I wanted. At I that literally time. almost puked when I drank it. Oh jeez. <laughs> like I think it, I think it was the tomato juice. It's an acquired taste. Like I. It was like carbonated light beer flavored tomato juice. Yeah, it's. I didn't hate it. It's just like it threw me off, and it wasn't what I was craving. But I guess if you get like a real one, like there are spices in there, and they're like maybe it's better. It's I just way better, apparently. Yeah. Who knows? And they don't use Bud Light. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm sure that's better. Maybe a good Modelo or something like that. Maybe just a maybe a, just a good beer. Yeah, I don't know. who knows? Regardless of that little tangent, yeah, or grass as we call it here on American Brews and Tunes. It's time to It's time to crickety crack this brewski. Crickety crack that brew before. Is a uh, is brewski too crude of a term to be calling it the Bourbon County brand stout that? No, because a brewski is a word for a beer. Yeah, but this is like a dessert. It is a dessert. It's a meal. It's a Let's unpack the basket here in a second. Yeah, as Jesse likes to right. go picnicking. Yeah, all the time. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna open this now. Go for it. Oh, baby, yeah. So from right. from what I remember, it, these these beers are not super duper carbonated. Um, there's always some carbonation, and this one's been aging for since, exactly a year. Oh, yeah, right? since we got it last year on Black Friday. So Friday's. it's not super duper aged, but it's aged enough where the carbonation probably mellowed out a little bit. Hopefully, the flavors mellowed out. Yeah. 
I'm gonna try to pour this evenly now. Um, yeah, I'm we're excited just using... for this. Normally, at least from what I remember, normally they taste the different years taste slightly different, right? Yeah, they do In taste general. different from year to year. Um, but normally, you get like a pretty strong bourbon flavor, but really the nice there, chocolate, a lot flavors. of chocolate, some coffee, um, lots of roasty malties. That's for sure. Lots of roast roasty malties, as we say here as well, and just all around good flavors. And did, did we say what the brewery was? I can't remember. Yeah, Goose Island. Goose Island, which is in still a microbrewery. Technically, yeah. Or is it micro or is it craft? I can't remember. But it is owned by, I believe, Miller Coors? Something like that, so it's yeah. it's owned by a macro brewery, but it's, you know, it's it's whatever. They do their thing. People get up in arms about the, the whole, that whole independent thing, beer yeah. scene. I'm, I'm all for independent breweries, but don't get... It's like, you know, they want to make money and still create a great beer. Good for them. All right, so I'm assuming that on the bottles it says something different, but on this bottle it says... They don't say too much on them. Intense aromas of charred oak, vanilla, caramel, and smoke. I'm getting chocolatey aromas. <laughs> oh, no, there's there's vanilla there. Honestly, I can um, kind of smell the smoke a little bit. I smell booze. Yeah, I smell for booze sure. on the nose. So I would say that we, uh, you know, give these the cheers, the... the Old motto that we like to do on American Brews and Tunes. You mean the best motto the ever? The best motto. And then give ever it a try. Existed. Yeah, sounds like a plan. This does sound like a plan. Wow. You do need to unpack the picnic basket with this one. Oh my gosh. It's not like you take a sip and then you automatically know the flavor. No. Um, it uh it evolves. Yeah. It, um the flavors come in waves. Like uh, the Decemberists. But yeah. you know what? I tasted chocolate up front and then it disappeared. And then I got like some smoky bourbon flavors, maybe mm-hmm. some vanilla in there. And then that, when that kind of faded, There's the chocolate like a rushed chocolate. back. And then at the right end, at the end, right now, I'm getting that nice, boozy, warm feeling the in warming, my throat. Yeah. Yeah. But the chocolate like started, went away, and then came back. Yeah. Oh, you're right. And in the, in the middle is where I got that the smoky um, barrel bourbon flavor. And it then was the like came back. a crescendo of chocolate into the caramely smokiness, then a day crescendo back into chocolate. Or as Voldemort would say, crescendo. <laughs> <laughs> you mean crescendo. <laughs> no, crescendo. Crescendo. <laughs> crescendo. If you take his wand and replace it with a, 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 uh, baton. a baton for a <laughs> choir or orchestra, <laughs> crescendo. <laughs> Every single time the choir director says, crescendo. Yo! <laughs> Voldemort style. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, man. I oh, wish I could goodness. see that. This is, I mean, as I per mean, usual, yeah, the Bourbon what, County what Grand Stout is great. Um, like Jesse said before, we had the, the coffee version. Um, we've had the Bourbon County brand barley wine, which was also a beast of a delicious Super beer. Super crazy. 2014 version of that. Mm-hmm. And they've always had, they always have some other um, variations. There was one year I had a, I was at uh, Craft Brew, our favorite uh, liquor store, tap room, bottle shop, whatever you want to call it. Yep. And they were doing a tasting of the Bourbon County brand stout, I believe it's 2014, the Vanilla Rye. Ooh, man. And it was so that sounds really ridiculously good. good. That sounds really good. It was so good. good. Like they only gave us a small like sample, but it was enough to take like maybe four or five sips on, and it was so good. Yeah. But this is also really good too. I'm enjoying this. Yeah. Mm. So before we get started uh, reviewing the album, um, I would say that this beer is obviously like a ten out of ten, hundred percent. Yeah, hundred percent. Like no way. It's dark, just like the holiday season. Yeah, and of course, before we start the episode uh, reviewing the album, some Mad Hope by Matt Nathanson. Boo! Boo who? <laughs> Boo who? And I was saying, Happy Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> Happy I'm Halloween, sorry. everybody. It is Halloween. Uh, this Today is Halloween. Maybe uh, maybe the boo scared somebody. <laughs> maybe. Boo! <laughs> <laughs> boo! <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys are having a fun, safe Halloween if you're listening to this on Halloween. Yeah. If not, hope you had a good Halloween a couple days ago. <laughs> You in the future. Yeah. Hopefully you had a great 2018 Halloween. If if it is Halloween still and you're listening, be safe tonight. Don't do anything stupid. Don't do anything we wouldn't do. Yeah. Don't drink and drive, guys. Be smart. Nope. Nobody likes a person who does that. <laughs> no. It's irresponsible people. Be the cool friend and say, I'll be the DD. Yeah. I'll be the dope the, the person. <laughs> 
I couldn't think of a second I word. I saw that you were, gonna, you were trying. You were struggling. You were like, dope. D- uh, uh, d- dope, <laughs> dope person. D- 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 to someone or other. <laughs> nah, be a, be, help your friends out. Don't do stupid things. Be smart. Yeah. Pass out candy or something instead. Yeah. Enjoy a glass of wine. Watch a scary movie. Eat a candy nice. bar. Have a bonfire. Bonfire. Put on yeah. a scary mask. A scary mask. You know, just live live life. Live life. Life's you know for what I'm the saying? living, as, uh, life as Ralph Garman says in the voice of that one guy who I can't remember. Uh, Life's for the living. I don't remember who that is. I can't remember either, but either way. Anyways, shall we delve into the album? We've yeah, we rambled shall, for a while. We shall. Uh, so the album, once again, is, is Some Mad Hope by Matt Nathanson. It was released in 2007. So it's it's 11 years old. Yeah. Uh, this it, was his sixth studio album. Yes. Do you know how many he has currently? No. Ten. Wow. He's been releasing albums since 1993. Really? Under his own solo name. So he's... Whoa. I know. That's surprising, isn't it? Yeah. So that's what... He's been around for 25 years. 25 years. 25 years? He's he's old. I know. So Wow. That's crazy. Um, But anyways, um, this is his most commercially successful album. Yeah. It reached uh, number three on independent... uh, Independent, top independent albums or something like that. Number 60 overall in the, the Billboard Top yeah. 200. And it went two times multi platinum, which is Crazy. quite an achievement. Yeah. You can't really, it's difficult to do that now, especially because people don't buy out full albums like yeah, they used to. People don't really buy records. I mean, anymore. You, it, you can, but it, it, it's got to be a specific reason. I, I, I find that it probably won't happen. That's not the primary medium. Unless it's country or Christian people. music. People pen, tend to buy more of country and Christian music. Really? Yeah, physical releases. Interesting. I, isn't it? Is that something you learned at BMI? Um, CMC. Oh, CMC. But it's true. That's pretty crazy. Uh, a little it's bit, of, in, a little bit of uh, industry knowledge for you guys. At least the Christian industry refers to the their most, like their biggest demographic as Becky. Uh, <laughs> that refers mom? to like the soccer mom who listens <laughs> to the radio and is the one who purchases the albums. Yeah, that's their big demographic, and they refer wow. to it as Becky. That's odd, pretty funny. isn't it? It sounds like I'm making it up. I, I mean, swear to I you, guess they have to have a demographic because they're like a business who sells things. I've had meetings at labels and I've heard about uh, A&R guys talk about quote unquote Becky. That's pretty funny. It's weird. Anyways, let's delve into this album, shall we? Let's do it up. <clears throat> this is definitely, how would you classify it? Pop? pop rock? Pop rock, yeah. Say poppy. pop rock. It's very poppy. The, pop, the production value rock. on this album is great. Oh yeah, it's very, very good. Um, there's not a single song that's not catchy on this album. Yeah, true. Uh, I I don't think there's really anything worthy of skipping. It's it's pretty solid the whole way through. Yeah. Um, some songs are better than others. Obviously, that's just the nature of music. Yeah. Um, but it's it's pretty solid. I was I was pretty happy from the the first listen. Yeah, I will honesty. say one thing about it. Go for it. Um, before we get going and kind of going into a brief overview of the songs, um. This album and many other episodes of this podcast have taught me something about listening to music or like just in general, like whenever you're listening to a new album or anything like that, a new band. Uh-huh. Uh, Cause like on this album at first I was like, Oh no, it's like a poppy album. I'm not going to like it, <laughs> but, and I feel like I've probably said this before, but you got to give, got to give it a chance. Yeah. Don't just, Listen to something one time and say, this is terrible. I'm done with it. Because things will really grow on you. Yeah. Um, I found some songs that I liked on that Animal Collective album. By the yeah. grace of God, somehow I it, <laughs> I made it through and liked some of the songs. <laughs> um, open up the... Open up... Sorry. Because as we've, uh, as we've started to kind of write our own songs more, or at least me, you have started... You've been writing songs longer than I have. Um you got to realize that, like, because Matt Nathanson is a songwriter. Work has gone into every single song. This is yeah, someone's, like, like baby. He would, songs. Yeah, like, he wouldn't, like, release a song, like, that he didn't like, that he didn't believe mm-hmm. in, that he didn't feel good about. Yeah. So, like, to just listen to an album one time and be like, bah, that's stupid. I don't like it. It's someone's hard it's work. It's kind of like, I mean, it's not like a direct diss to him, You're but it's like. You're on someone's work. Yeah, and so, like, on you got to give. hard-earned, crafted music. got to yeah. give, got to give every album a chance and maybe it's not your aesthetic style like this album's not my style but, but you gave it a chance yeah but i gave it a chance and it grew on me big time it definitely did yeah i like the album yeah it's very good i think shall we start where we always start at There's the that. beginning at the beginning <laughs> yes let's start the first song is called car crash i would um, recommend this song 
I didn't recommend it. I don't give any ratings, but I do have recommendations. And yeah, I didn't give mention. any ratings either. Um, I thought about recommending, but I didn't. Da, 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 da. Ba, 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 I want to feel your car crash. I want to yeah. be the capsize. But this song's a really good start to the album. It's super upbeat and poppy. Yeah. But I would say it's a little heavier than a lot of the songs to come. Yeah, there are only um, a few kind of heavier songs on yeah. the album. But I feel like this is a good one to put up front. So you, you start the record out like high energy. Yeah. Um, Maybe not give a 100% preview of what's to come, but you, you lay the, the big energy out there. Yeah, you, you it's get definitely a, a more of a high energy song. Yeah, like when you go to a concert, people play their high energy stuff first. Yeah. To kind of get everyone like, yeah! Right. Uh. You don't... <laughs> You don't start off by playing the slowest song in the album, unless it's like really popular and people love it. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, but yeah, like, like I said, it's a little heavier than, than some of the other ones. But, yeah, I uh, like it. And I have three recommendations, and this would be one of them. This would be one of them? Yeah. yeah that's a good one. Uh, the guitar tone is really cool in here, uh, the yes. heavy guitar tone. Uh, it's hard to tell 100% what this song's about, but I've got two ideas. I think it's about trying to find motivation and kind of trying to get to that next step in life or in whatever so that's like relative to whatever you're doing the two verses kind of threw me for for what it was going on the first verse kind of led me to believe that he's in like a a place that's almost too good to be true and he's waiting for the bottom to fall Mm, out and he's just like saying like you know but then the other verse seems to be like he he's like waiting I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what is the word for it? <laughs> I lost the word for it, but, but okay. that's that's what I'm saying. He's he's looking for something bad to happen, but to take confidence in it, to to have like to feel comforted by it almost because it okay. will feel good to be to feel real, I guess. Things are seeming too good, so there has to be I want to feel the car he's just crash. like waiting for it to change. Yeah. In a way. Okay, interesting. But yeah, I like that song a lot though. Great start to the album. I agree. Yeah, I move on to a on to the probably most well known song on this yeah. album. Um, when when we had been recommended this album, I was like, I've never heard of this guy. I've never heard of this album. Yeah, and then as soon and as I looked him up, this, this song popped yeah. up. I was like, Oh, everybody in <laughs> like, their their mom knows this everybody song. Everybody knows this song. Uh, the second song in the album is "Come and Get Higher." Come on, get higher. You listen my lips, taste and desire, and the swing of your hips. Da 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 da. Did we just sing those on perf like uh, harmonies on fifths? I think I we know. we did fifths. Didn't sound great. That's okay. Um, Do it again. Come on, get high, and loosen my lips, faith and desire, and the swing of your hips. <laughs> that was a weird harmony, but it was better than what happened before. Oh Everyone gosh. knows this song. Yeah. Um, it's a great song. Before kind of looking at the lyrics, I thought it was, come on, get higher, kiss of my lips. Kiss of my lips. <laughs> um, when you look into the lyrics, you realize that the song is about taking acid. <laughs> JK. <laughs> LOL. Uh, this song's about love. Yeah, which um, most of the songs, that's the subject matter. It is. That's a, a pretty current theme yeah. um, for the better or for the worse on this album. For the better or for the um, worse. It, it goes all over the, the place, yeah. thanks to reiterate. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in this song, um, it, there's a little in, innuendos going on, um, mm-hmm. and it it, uh, it doesn't devolve, but it, it deals with the physical aspect of love. Yeah, because what, what the, isn't the, that's the come on part, right? Uh, yeah. For, for when you come, more or less. come on. <laughs> but like, I mean, you just listen to the lyrics and the, yeah. the, the chorus. And you're like, yeah, it's it's about love. <laughs> <laughs> and the it's making of. <laughs> love. <laughs> uh, but it's you guys song. know what we're talking about. I didn't want to recommend it because everybody knows this song. Yeah, same here. I was, I mean. And I actually think there are better songs on the album. Same. I mean, it's, uh, the chorus is insanely catchy. It is. Like, I and know, like, like, it's easy to see why it's popular. Yeah, and that's, uh, that's one other thing about this album is that, like, most of the choruses are just really good. But, but and a lot of them follow the formula of, um, reserved verse, big chorus. Yeah, big reserved, chorus, yeah. Know. And this song, it's generally quiet throughout the whole thing. Mm-hmm. I was always the chorus looking, isn't isn't a big no, it's not it's one, not yeah. a big chorus. It's just the melody carries the mm-hmm. chorus. Yeah. Anyway, that's a great song. You guys probably already know it. Yeah. Moving oh. on to track number three, which is called "Heartbreak World." I almost recommended this one. It's a good one. The piano chords at the beginning kind of remind me of "Free Falling" because it's like bum 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 bum, but it switches. Fairly quickly, and you're like, "This isn't free falling." Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can hear it now. 
in my head. I just um, I just played free fall and the chorus of free fall in my head. This song crescendos a big mm-hmm. time and it gets huge. And I think it's really cool when it reaches that climax. Yeah, um, but definitely. this song's about like running away. It's it's hard to tell like if they will run away or if they just fantasize about running away. Yeah, um, and the reason why I say it's hard to tell because like the chorus, like the the first line is in this heartbreak world of just imagine. So like yeah. just imagine if we left all this behind and ran away to L.A. or, or ran away to bigger, better things. Yeah, and in that, that same vein, it kind of relates to the album title, Some Mad Hope. Yeah. It's like that idea or theme is kind of uh, permeates, is that the word? Yeah. Permeates throughout the whole album. Every time you say Some Mad Hope, I think you're thinking Some Matt Hope. <laughs> some Matt Hope. Because his name's Matt. Let's move on to uh, the next song. Gone. Track number four, which is called Gone. Um, this it's song is like in, in the previous song where they're fantasizing kind of about leaving the songs about like going him being, yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. almost like a continuation theme wise. Yeah. Um, it's always about him like escaping like a painful situation. Yeah. Um, it's good. Yeah. It's, I it's mean, good. like we, like we said before, like <laughs> all the songs are good. Yeah. This one's got like a really fun bouncy feel though. I thought, mm-hmm. Should we move on to track number five? Yeah. Uh, this song's called Wedding Dress, and it's my first recommendation. Okay. I did not recommend it because I thought you would. Fair enough. Probably because I told you about it earlier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was first drawn into this because of the melody. That's always what draws me in first. Yeah. Um, a, a solid melody can do wonders, uh, obviously. Yeah. Um, the chorus is super duper catchy. Um, in your wedding dress. Good harmonies. Um, but I figured this was a love song upon my first couple of listens. Maybe. Like, I was like, oh, yeah, they're getting married. This is great. This is a first dance song because it's in a triple meter. So it's like one, two, three, one, yeah, two, three, the waltz. which is really danceable. Like you'd imagine dancing to that. One, two, three, one, two. But then three. after like listening and hearing some of the lyrics, I was like, there is like, definitely hmm. pain and withdrawal in some of these lyrics. So I'm not yeah. entirely sure what's, what's going on. So after yeah. reading the lyrics, I was like, this, there's conflict here. And I'm not entirely sure what he's saying. Yeah. Um, so I had to do a little bit of digging to to kind of figure out what was going on, but I found a Reddit AMA with Matt Nathanson. Oh, really? I did. Wow. And someone asked what it was about. And uh, I also, b- before I say what he says, what did he I'll say? say one other thing that I, I found an interview okay. of him saying that he it was he was talking about a more recent album that he put out and about how he needed to be more straightforward with his lyrics. He's like. I guess I wasn't as straightforward as I thought I was on Wedding Dress because people were using this as their first dance songs as their wedding and it's not what it's supposed to be about. Ooh. And so I'm like, well, then what is it supposed to be about? Yeah. Which leads us to the Reddit AMA when someone asks what it's about. Um, and this is a direct quote from Matt Nathanson. It says, Wedding Dress is about my marriage and my almost divorce and my struggle to actually treat someone I loved with the respect and love they deserved. Wow. So there's a lot of pain and emotion in that song. Very yeah. personal. I guess people just kind of focus on the line in your wedding dress. Mm-hmm. And they're like, oh, great. Let's play it at a wedding. But I mean, there's there's definitely lyrics where he's like, he wants to be somewhere else. He like doesn't, yeah. he struggles with the commitment. Thinks he's lost her. Like there's like, yeah. there's some stuff where like, this doesn't really jive with a wedding day. Yeah. It doesn't, it's not the same mentality. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's more introspective than it appears. It's a beautiful song. It is and it was nice. featured on the TV show that I've never watched called One Tree Hill. <laughs> I saw one episode. I liked it, and then I never watched it again. <laughs> Becca's been trying to get me to watch it, but it's not on Netflix, not so happened. I can't find it. I'll, I'll probably watch it with her. Uh, it's on Hulu, and she has Hulu, so maybe I'll watch it on there. Oh, okay. Because we started on Netflix, and then like a week or two later, it got pulled from Netflix really? and bumped over to Hulu. Were you like, whew, don't want to watch that anymore? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Actually, it was it was interesting uh, because it, uh, I guess the it's either the writer or the director is a big punk fan. Oh right, yeah, I remember. And there's Becca a lot of no that. effects stuff in there. Yeah, that's pretty dope. Yeah, so I thought that was cool. There's no effects stickers and stuff, and it, it seemed interesting. I just I don't know it. I didn't grow up watching it. Same. Uh, let's move on to track number six. Number six. It's called Bulletproof Weeks. Weeks or Bulletproof Weeks. Weeks. Uh, it's another sad song. Uh, yeah, it's definitely it really is. Post breakup, and they're reminiscing about the early days when they were naive and the relationship was yeah. strong. The one, the one line that I really like it is, uh, "What happened to feeling cheap radio songs?" Yeah, because the, the songs that don't matter too much, but you just like, but like you the lyrics like make sense whenever you're in that kind of emotional. I like those relationship. lyrics. The thing I like about the song is the melody over top of that because it almost sounds like he's not singing like in key almost, but it fits really well. What happened? Like he kind of like s- 
swings the lyrics and kind of like hits some, I don't want to say blue notes, but like these lazy notes that kind of like gloss over where it hits and then drops, like drops down. What yeah. happened to bulletproof weeks? Yeah. And I just really like oh, that right, yeah. melodic choice. Yeah, it's like, it's like a... I don't know how to call the, uh, it. It's hard to it was, describe if it was on a, If it was on a... Um, like, say you're writing for violin, it would be it would be like a downward kind of curved line. We slide. It would be, would be a note that you go, pew! Like yeah. that. Yeah. It's a really, anyway, really cool then, choice. One kind of little thing that I found funny mm-hmm. is the next part in that song, the next line after that, where he says, what happened to thinking the earth is flat? <laughs> <laughs> it's about and being, I was like, hee hee, people think it's flat, flat earthers. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, I mean, that's a reference to being naive and not caring about the yeah. truth. Yeah, exactly. But it's just funny that people yeah. actually believe that now. I listened to two podcasts on flat earthers, one from a, a podcast called Time Suck. The other oh, right. uh, from the last podcast on the left. Both were wildly entertaining. Uh, and it's just baffling that people are actually believing in flat earth. Literally the flat earth society, I believe is what they call it. Actually believe. It's ridiculous. It's, it is ridiculous because people are just insane. Shall we move on? Track we number shall. seven. This song is To the Beat of Our Noisy Hearts, and I recommended it. Same here. Um, I think we're going to recommend the, la- the last. Our we might. last recommendation is going to be see. the same. Uh, but this one is like a 180 from the last song, um, lyrically, thematically, and musically. Uh, it's bouncy, like driving and upbeat. Yeah, there's like a do really do cool cut, like guitar cut, part. Do do cut, it just plays like cut, on the quarter cut, notes, but it sounds really cut. cool. It's like ding, 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 yeah. ding, ding. It's, it's just Along a really, with that really upbeat drum. Yeah, I love that percussion in the verse. It's just yeah. it's really fun sounding. And the chorus is just so great. Like the ver- this is the one thing you were talking about how it has like a really kind of like low chorus, like low dynamically. And then the chorus is leads on in with the snare note, the snare like, the Yeah. On and on. Bum, 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 bum. Mm-hmm. To the, the, the beat the of notes. our noisy hearts. Yeah, it's but just good. The song's just I what I think is it's about the excitement of love. Yeah. Like being excited when you're in love, young in love, maybe I don't. But uh, that's what I got out of it. It's a really kind of, like fun, catchy song. I'm thinking about it right now, and I'm bopping my head up and down. <laughs> I can confirm to you all, he is bopping his head. <laughs> uh, moving on to track number eight, which is called "Still." Still, um, this slows a little from the last song, yeah. But it follows that pattern of uh, big choruses, yeah, uh, with drawed verses, yeah. And that brings up another point. There's a lot of good contrast on this album between songs. Like the way they ordered the songs is uh, is pretty good, I think. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In this song, he's reminiscing about like being with this person and being in this past relationship. Mm-hmm. But it's hard to tell if he's still with that person or not. Yeah. Um, and I like I really tried to figure it out, and I couldn't. Mm. But, I mean, you guys take a listen and see what you can figure out. Yeah, let us know. Maybe I mean, maybe it's meant to be interpreted whichever way you want. Um, I don't think we're going to recommend this, this, the same one. Track okay. number nine, number nine, which is my honorable mention. Oh, you probably recommended, I recommended it. it. Yeah, this is called Detroit Waves. Detroit Waves. I, yeah. I was on the borderline. I almost recommended or it. Or some people say Detroit Waves. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe the the French. I don't know. Um, uh, the guitar intro is awesome, but I kept hearing it, and I was like, "This sounds a lot like another song I know." And I was really struggling to figure out what song it reminded me of. I was like, I, this definitely is something that Brian Fallon wrote. So I was like listening to all these Gaslight Anthem songs. I was like, what song does this remind me of? Yeah. And then finally it clicked. There's a yellow card song called Far Away. Uh, the guitar the, line is the, the intro same. The intro is very, very similar. But just, I think there's a... Sped up a little bit. Yeah, he's... And Matt there's a Nathan violin. speeds it up, yeah. Matt Nathan slows it down. Oh, it slows it down. Yeah. But it's similar. And But then once the song starts, it's completely different. Yeah, yeah. It's just that one guitar line that sounds similar. But it's a really cool guitar line, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and, and it's just a dope song in general. This might be the heaviest song on the album. This is definitely the heaviest and fastest song mm-hmm. on the album. It. He kind of... He, he, does he strain his voice near the end of it? He, he, he gets up like there, it, yeah. You mean during the bridge? Yeah, he he was like ah, like not yeah. really, but you know, he, he can hear the voice straining. Yeah, it's he wanted to get that so effect. Good. Um, but it's a really good song. It really yeah. took me by surprise on the first listen. Like I, I know. was not expecting. This. I know, like during the the whole up, like the previous eight tracks, I was like, I was like, all right, yeah, this is uh, this is pretty good. And then this song came out, I was like, whoa, did this all of a sudden turn like into like a punk album? Yeah, the guy <laughs> that did Come On Get Higher sings this song. <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, at the first listen that I had, where I didn't really pay attention to the lyrics. 
I figured he was talking about like the waves, like in the water <laughs> in Detroit, <laughs> maybe in the the, the lake. Yeah. But, um, clearly, that's not what it's lake about. Michigan. It's about Detroit waving goodbye, like yeah. about leaving again. That theme of leaving or going, yeah. um, and it's about a relationship being strained because he's constantly leaving. Yeah. Maybe because he's on tour, a musician probably. probably. Yeah. Uh, that makes sense. Obviously, I mean, that, this that is seems, his sixth album. That so. seems like it's a constant theme throughout any songwriter if uh, they're. Yeah. If they're famous touring enough and they're touring, yeah, great song though. I, oh, I, I think it's such great. A good song. I really wanted to recommend it, but there was one more that There's I thought one more was way that you better. Like better. Okay, yeah. I'll be excited to see which one it is. Honestly, yeah. Move on. There to track are number three 10. songs left. There are three songs left. Track number ten is called "Falling Apart." Falling apart, falling apart. Falling this is the apart. one that's got the woes in the chorus. Whoa, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. yeah. Um, gotta love the woes. Reminds me of Billy Joel. Um, but this song seemed Whoa. like a slow song. Like, you, you, yeah. you think Detroit Waves is like a fast, heavy song, so he you gotta put a slow song next, my friend, just to keep the balance. You have and to. And then after hearing like the, the verse, you're like, all right, he did put a slow song. And then it gets to the chorus and it picks it up, and you're like, oh, yeah. this isn't a slow song. Yeah. What's going on here? He's a tricker. <laughs> he is a tricker. Trickery is a foot. Uh, but again, this is about relationships and his struggle to be present or be there, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And how so again, that 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 spilling uh, over and falling apart. The album title, "Some Mad Hope," yeah. is relatable to most of these songs. To <sighs> most, if not all, all I'd say, all yeah. of them. I mean, there's a reason that he titled the album "Some Mad Hope," and none of the songs are titled "Some Mad Hope." Yeah. Moving on to track number eleven, the penultimate track. This song is yes. called "Sooner Surrender," and it's my last recommendation. Really yeah. interesting. It starts off with this organ. That sounds really cool, like a church organ type thing, and then the guitar and the vocals come in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that low note. Uh, okay. But I love that. But then the chorus, when the chorus, the chorus hits, takes you for a surprise. Surrender. I love that line. Like yeah. that, that is the most money note on the entire album. Mm. I think it's probably my favorite song on the whole album just Interesting. because it's, wow. it's like I was sold on this song the first listen. Mm. Um, I just think it's, I don't know, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, like that falsettos are so smooth. He's got the full voice. My only regret on this song, or it's not a regret for me because I didn't do it. My only complaint I, sh- I should say is that where he does that falsetto sooner surrender. He doesn't, yeah. I was like, on the last chorus, he should full voice it. Yo, Push it out yeah, there. I, yeah, I wanted yeah. him to, but he never did. Yeah. But that's okay. I still yeah. like the song just as much. Yeah, that's okay. It, maybe maybe he did it live. I don't know. Ooh, that would actually be kind of interesting yeah, kind if of he like, did. Um, you know, 21 Guns by Green Day? One, yeah. 21 Guns. He full voices that live. Oh, really? Yeah, it sounds really cool. Nice. Falsettos are, are difficult on a microphone. They have to got to be compressed and mixed right. Oh. Um. But this song, Sooner Surrender, um, is about how his love has left and is with someone else. I mean, he definitely says that in the song. Yeah. Uh, it's it's very apparent. Um, and he's given up, I think. Like, sooner, yeah, so I, I better sooner surrender. He's trying you know? to surrender sooner yeah. than he probably wants to. Yeah. Beautiful melody for a sad, sad yeah. song. For sure. Um, shall we move on to the last song? Yes, we shall. Uh, song number 12. The last song in the album is called All, All We Are. All We Are. All We Are is... Dust in the wind. We are. Oh, we are. We are. We are. The slow song for the closer. It's it's an interesting choice. Um, what do you think the song is about? Is it just like about like the reality of life? Like all we are. It could be, but I think he's again reminiscing of a love that he took for granted. Yeah, probably. Um, that's that's what I think of a lot of the lyrics. But then there's hope in the chorus. Some mad hope. There is some some mad hope, which is the the title. Uh, but the words in the chorus is, all we are, we are. So we are what we are, obviously. Um, and every day is a start of something beautiful. Yeah. So there's, like, no matter if you've gone through some, something yeah, crappy hope. or something bad, there's every day is a new day and just, you are who you are. Seize the day! Or seize the night, as Will Varley would say. Seize the afternoon! Seize 5 p.m. Seize the now. How about that? Mm, seize the now. So you're going to worry about time of day. Just seize the now. Stephen Johnston, hashtag, 20, 2018. Hashtag seize the now. Seize the now. Spelt S-E-E-Z-Z. <laughs> Too much. The now. <laughs> seize the now. Regular spelling. Don't listen to Jesse. <laughs> 
Anyways, I, I I'm very pleased with this album. I, yeah, I, I know. Whenever uh, whenever I realized it was a guy who wrote "Come on, get higher," I was like, "Oh, above! What did you recommend for us?" But I don't he know made. If a, I'm gonna like it. He made a good choice. But I'm, I'm happy I listened to this. Above came through yet again. He did. I'd like. To, I'd probably share out some more of his stuff. I, I think it's it's very accessible. Um, it's very catchy, and I it's just really enjoyable. Yeah, good music. For sure. So I'll check out some more of his stuff. Uh, definitely, you all should check it out. Uh, it's worth it's, listening yeah, to. Yeah, it's for sure worth listening to. Yeah, it's fun music good. that you can enjoy with everybody. Yeah. yeah. Shall so, we? Uh, as another episode of American Brews and Tunes comes to a close, we, we shall talk about this beer again. But before we do that, but before we do that, looking forward to next week, um, we're returning to the one off format where we will review one episode, or I'm sorry. One band, <laughs> album, and one beer that we choose. Yep. Um, and we are going to review On the Impossible Past by the Menzingers. Oh, yeah. An album that we both love. Yes. And then after and that, we'll, we that will we return uh, for episode number 60, which will be our regular format. Yeah. We'll tell you about those next week. Yeah. Um, and just a side note, if you have not listened to the Menzingers, listen to them because yeah. they are a dope band. Yeah. And also, if you would also like to recommend an album for us to listen to, just let us know. Yeah, let us know. You can message us, up us on Instagram. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Uh, just look up American Brews and Tunes. You can find us. Or you can send us an email to Tunes at gmail.com. Yes. Or you can go to our website, <laughs> brewsandtunespodcast.com. Um, shall we uh, finish our beers and sign off? Yeah, let's do that. Um, I mean... So- so, we are, since we started the beer while well, it was already warming up, we got the flavors in there. I think it's been consistent. It has been. It's and, been uh, consistently delicious. I'm try- I feel like the booziness has come through a, just a tiny bit a more. A little more. It's not like... And along with that, the smokiness of the bourbon. Yes. I well, I wouldn't say smokiness, but the bourbon flavors come through. Yeah. Yeah. But it's it's phenomenal. Either way, phenomenal beer. Go out on Black Friday and try to get it, you guys, yeah. because it's dope. If you guys like stouts, if you like bourbon, if you like chocolate, if you like coffee, or if you just you don't know what you like and you're curious, <laughs> why not give it a try? <laughs> oh, the worst man. that can happen is you don't like it. If you don't like it, share it with someone else. You'll make a good friend. Yeah, that's yeah. very true. <laughs> um, so let's uh, let's finish this off and sign off for the episode. All right. She- she- be- 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 Mm, <sighs> so good delicious amazing once again my name is steven johnston and my name is jesse titus and this is american brews and tunes yeah here's a theme song you know it's not a mean song it's a good song just as it should song american brews and tunes shibbity beep